There's a new scam in gaming going on that everyone is just letting happen. We let the loot boxes happen. We let the microtransactions happen. We let the $70 games happen. And now there's this. I'm talking about early access. Now, when I talk about early access, I'm not referring to a thing that a lot of indie games do like Hades, where you can buy a development build of the game for a cheaper price, and then you can give feedback based on your experience. No, I'm talking about what a lot of AAA game studios are doing right now, which is charging extra to give access to the game a few days before what's called the official release date. And this is something that is becoming more and more prevalent with big game releases. Some of the biggest games of 2023 have followed this tactic. Like Hogwarts Legacy, you could pay an extra $10 to get in 72 hours before the official release date. Or Diablo 4, you'd pay an extra $20 to get in four days before. Baldur's Gate 3 on the PS5, you could pay an extra $10 to get in 72 hours before everyone else. And then the most recent one is Starfield, where you'd pay an extra $30. Yes, there's DLC included, but it's an extra $30 to get in five days before the official release date. And also, I'm sure just a total coincidence that the early access date just happened to put it before Labor Day weekend instead of after. And I think calling this early access is pretty disingenuous because if you can buy the full and complete version of the game for full price or really above full price on a certain date, then that is the release date. You can't just pick some arbitrary date after the game is already available and say, oh no, that's the release date. Not this other date where you can buy the game. This date is the release date. Really, it should not be called early access. I think it should be called the sucker tax because if you're paying for this kind of stuff, you're a sucker. And companies are gonna do whatever they can to make extra money, I get that. And at the same time, people can do what they want with their money if they wanna pay to get in earlier than some other people. But that doesn't change the fact that this whole thing is just really scummy. Because what game development studios and publishers should be doing is making money off of a game that is just so high in quality that everyone wants to buy it and play it, not trying to capitalize off of FOMO. And if you have a game available to purchase on a certain date, and then let's say five days later is the official release date and the price drops, that's not the release date, that's just a price cut. And what they're also doing is taking full advantage of spoiler culture, which is becoming more and more rampant. Because yes, you could theoretically just totally unplug from the internet to avoid spoilers and just not look at anything about the game, but as we become more and more connected, that becomes increasingly unrealistic. Because a lot of time you might just be trying to find information about a game, like what platforms it releases on, and you'll be spoiled just in the headlines of a million articles that come out. Or you'll go on to the front page of YouTube and there'll be full endings with spoilers in the titles and thumbnails right there on your homepage. And remember in Hogwarts Legacy's case, there was actually a campaign by people to spoil the game for people who were going to buy it. And I don't think the publisher of the game was upset about that. They were probably like, yeah, well, you gotta buy the game fast. Don't want it to get spoiled for you. And so these fake early access editions usually do give you some other DLC, very minor stuff as well, like some in-game items, or in Baldur's Gate 3's case, a dice skin. Like, ooh, a dice skin? Gotta pay extra for that. But you know the reason that people are buying these digital deluxe editions is not for those little trinkets. They're buying to get in before everyone else because a lot of people just don't have patience. And really, the people I think who should be the most upset about this are Game Pass users because with a game like Starfield, you're paying Game Pass monthly to play games day one, but if a game is only available in this early access thing five days before, you're not really getting it day one anymore, are you? Yeah, it's day one, but you have to pay $30 extra to actually play it day one. And the thing that sucks about this is, as long as people keep buying into it, it's not going to stop anytime soon. Like when GTA 6 eventually releases, I would not be surprised at all if there's an early access edition for let's say 20 or 30 bucks more to get you in a few days earlier. And people are gonna be buying that in droves and it's just money capitalizing off of hype. And I don't expect this to happen at all, but I would really love if people just developed a little bit more self-control. Like you don't have to buy a game on the release date. Oftentimes, after a few patches and some price cuts, you can get a better experience at a lower price if you just wait a few months. 
And people buying games on release date or pre-ordering games or buying into this fake early access thing, are their backlogs totally empty and they really have nothing else to play? I highly doubt that. It's just frustrating to see very anti-consumer practices be so widely adopted and accepted by consumers. It just doesn't give me much faith in what game companies are going to try to do in the future. Because now it might be $10 for 72 hours early access, but in a few years it could be $50 for three weeks early access. And based off what I'm seeing, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people paid for that. You just can never underestimate the power of hype to influence people into poor financial decisions. All right, that is the end of the video. Thank you for watching.